Hello and welcome to Sports Week. I'm Grant Payne. On the show this week, Winchester City in League and Cup action. Eastley look to get back to winning ways. And in rugby, Winchester in high scoring match at North Falls Park. We start this week with another Winchester City double header as they went into a championship six pointer with third place Bemerton Heath Harlequins. And then two days later, they had a chance to progress in the Wessex League Cup. Will Cooper was at both. City's title charge encountered a League Six pointer on Saturday as third place Bemerton Heath Harlequins visited the Den Plan. The goals have been flowing freely for both sides of late, but a dire first half was rounded off by a deflected effort from City frontman Nathan Lynch. The second half fared better for the home team, but it remained goalless until the 58th minute. McCarthy and Mills are up from the back, and it's aimed in at Mills! That's a superb glancing header, and the former England schoolboy has made the breakthrough in this championship six-pointer. In front of their biggest home crowd of the season, City nearly hit Bemberton on the break, Glasspool nearly doubling the lead. As a Jaley breaks into the box, and it's found its way to Glasspool, Glasspool shoots off the post, Lynch tries to pick up the pieces. But the score remained the same to see City rise to the top spot in the Wessex Premier League. City again had the chance to capitalise on their form when Totten and Ealing were the visitors in the Wessex League Cup on Monday night. After Lynch had given the hosts an early lead, Simon Kirk floated in a free kick to Doug Rowe. Rowe went through again four minutes later and the game was surely in the bag for Winchester. As Totten pressed in the second half, Winchester had chances on the break, sub Glasspool taking full advantage. Medenzi yeah! inside to Glasspool, Glasspool is left but shoots, yeah! hits four, and Glasspool is back in the goals. Totten did pull two back, Steve Jenkins with the pick of the goals, but Winchester strode through to the fourth round with manager Guy Butters impressed with his squad's form. It's going to be a difficult game on the Isle of Wight, it's, you know, one of them sort of things you settle for a draw before the game really, you know, get a point over there is a good result, but the way we've been playing lately, I can't see any reason why we can't go over there. If we if we perform the way that we know we can, like tonight, some of the goals tonight, you know, brilliant goals, Dougie's, Dougie Rowe's been on fire. Um, and what, what you find now as well is making the uh, selection choices for me really hard, because like I say, Dougie's coming, bang two in tonight. I'm pleased to say I'm now joined by Will, who is at both of those games. Will, uh, you was there. Uh, how important were those two victories to Winchester? Well, the Bevington game was a massive result for City because earlier on in the season when they lost away to Poole and Bournemouth successively, it looked like they were out of the title race. But after this massive championship six-pointer, it looks like they're right back in the title race. Yeah, you say you say that, and uh, early on in the season uh, they may have come back and equalised Bemerton, but they seem to have grown and gelled as a squad so that they can see out games like this now. Well, yeah, with the second half goals against Bournemouth and Paul, a late one at Bournemouth, um, manager Guy Butters said he'd bite your hand off if they, he could get a draw away to some teams, including Newport, who Winchester away to on Saturday. And now they seem to be scoring the goals and getting the results that matters, which is vital for your form at the top of the table. And being out of the FA Cup and FA Vars so early on, how important was the League Cup win against uh, Tottenham and Ealing, just for the team and for the squads? Well, it's a lot more important to the team and to the players because depth is something Winchester were lacking at the start of the season. And now with the youth team playing in three cup competitions, we're getting, they're getting the players up there to play for the first team and it's giving it depth, which is something, again, that's vital in a team that's chasing promotion. Thanks very much for joining us today, Cheers, Will. Grant. Now, it's more football for you. Eastley started their FA Trophy campaign to lower league opposition in the form of Folkestone in Victor, looking to improve on their recent league form. Amy Pickering saw the action for us. Folkestone and Victor were the visitors on Saturday as Eastley started their FA Trophy campaign. The Spitfires dominated the opening exchanges. And Gillespie does it again, his fifth goal of the season. As the hosts dominated their lower league opponents, Brett Williams almost doubled the lead but was denied by the post. The second half didn't change proceedings as Eastley showed their goal. And Gillespie gets his second. It's now 2-0 to Eastley. The Spitfires then looked to have extended their lead even further. And Eastley have scored! No? Is it? No! Is it disallowed? But the goal was correctly disallowed for a Tom Jordan handball. Darren Smith quickly replied for Folkestone with this excellent shot. And Folkestone have scored. Folkestone got back into the game after scoring, the best of their second half chances coming from Robbie Kember. 
Folkestone pushed hard for an equaliser, but their pressure was to no avail, as easily held out to secure their place in the next round. And in another result from the Wessex League, Allsford Town completed an emphatic 5-0 victory away to New Milton Town, Dean Cole bagging a hat-trick for the Magpies. And in the FA Trophy, Basingstoke defeated local rivals Havant and Waterlooville 2-1 at Wesley Park on Monday night, as the Dragons marched on into the FA Trophy first round proper. They will now face a home tie against Salisbury City, and as you saw earlier, EC will be joining them and will face Sutton United at the Silver Lake Stadium. Those ties will be played on Saturday the 11th of December. Winchester Rugby First were also in action at North Falls Park on Saturday as they faced off with Old Wellingtonians in a game that proved to be quite a spectacle. Dave Champion reports. Winchester Rugby Club faced close league rivals Old Wellingtonians on the 20th of November. Winchester started well with Rice crossing the line just two minutes in. Wellingtonians hit back soon after with a penalty kick, followed by a seven point try making it 10 all. Winchester's Dave Poynton scored 24 minutes in after an Adkins snipe. Parsons added the extras and then a long range penalty kick making it 20 10. Winchester had the last say in the first half with this forward orientated try. Winchester started the second half well, pacing over the line following a skillful offload. This was followed soon after by a similar try from Winchester's Burt, and the game looked all but over. Wellingtonians fought back though in the 69th minute, scoring in the corner after consistent pressure from the forwards. They scored two more forward dominated tries late on, giving a final score of 40-20 in favour of Winchester. David Champion, Winchester News Online. That's all for this week. Join us next week as we follow Winchester City to the Isle of Wight and more of your local sport. Goodbye.